Remember this, Spurs fans? You might even have been in this crowd. This was Madrid in 2019 before the Champions League final. The Champions League final. This was just over two years ago. Since then, it's been a pretty hellacious time. Mauricio Pochettino sacked his manager just months later. Jose Mourinho's tenure, which even the most fervent of Jose stands, have to admit was pretty disastrous. And the infamous 72-day hunt for Mourinho's replacement, ending with the underwhelming appointment of Nuno Espirito Santo, a man the club had rejected earlier in the process. And the results? Sixth in the Premier League in the Pochettino Mourinho season, and seventh last campaign under Mourinho and caretaker Ryan Mason, landing Spurs in the Europa Conference League. And awful results, including losing four of four London derbies, culminated in fan frustration being laid bare during a miserable home defeat to Manchester United. Nuno was sacked after just four months in charge. Antonio Conte tasked with reversing the decline, but it will be the most challenging appointment of his career. So, where did it all go wrong for Tottenham? Let's go back to November 2019 and the Pochettino sacking. Harsh as it was, even Poch himself has since admitted he had it coming. Especially when he's going into the Champions League final, suggesting he might quit. Yes, I am going to leave or if I lose, maybe two. But having it coming isn't the same as it being the right decision. Ciao. Pochettino had warned that the club needed a painful rebuild, even as Spurs were on the verge of that Champions League final, knowing that several of his key players needed to be moved on and replaced with fresh blood. But that's not what happened. Spurs chairman Daniel Levy decided that, rather than entrust Pochettino with that painful and expensive rebuild, Mourinho could cajole an extra couple of years of usefulness from the old guard. Rather than make the signings needed, it was cheaper to sack the club's best manager, certainly since Keith Birkinshaw nearly 40 years ago, and maybe since Bill Nicholson nearly 50 years ago. It wasn't the first time Pochettino had been undermined by Tottenham's transfer policy. A year earlier, Spurs had famously failed to sign a single player in the summer transfer window, and wouldn't sign anyone that winter either. And though at the time Poch called that brave, his feelings were better summed up early in that 2018-19 season when he called it his worst feeling at Tottenham. I think the club is not focused completely in winning titles or winning games, he said. His frustration continued to bubble even through that magical run through the Champions League. Despite Tottenham bringing in Tongi and Dombele, Giovanni Lo Celso and Ryan Sessegnon in that summer of 2019, Pochettino bemoaned his lack of input into Spurs' ins and outs. I am not in charge. I don't know nothing about the, the situation of uh, my player. I am, I am only coaching them. No, maybe the club need to change my title and description now. No, because my job now is to coach the team. I am the boss, designing the strategy to, to play, to training, to the methodology, the philosophy the, in my area. But in another area, I am today, if I think I, I am the coach. But let's rewind further to when Poch first had his title changed from head coach to manager, when signing a new contract in 2016. Something else changed in 2016. Spurs head of recruitment, Paul Mitchell, resigned that August, reportedly feeling his dream job turned into a nightmare. Among Mitchell's signings were Deli Ali, Son Hyun Min, Toby Alderweireld, and Kieran Trippier, all of whom became massive successes for the club. Spurs scout David Pleat is also credited with finding Deli, but it was still done on Mitchell's watch. He'd also taken Alderweireld to Southampton on loan from Atletico Madrid, and Victor Wanyama was another he signed for both the Saints and Spurs. 
A third Mitchell signing for Southampton, Sadio Mane, was another he wanted to bring to North London before Mane went to Liverpool instead, just a few weeks before Mitchell handed in his notice. Given he remained close with Pochettino, it's hard to conclude his issues could be anything other than frustration with Levy. Eventually, Tottenham replaced Mitchell with Steve Hitchin, a man credited with finding Luka Modric for Spurs and Luis Suarez for Liverpool, although he really just scouted them to verify they could play in the Premier League. And look at the signings Spurs have made since Hitchin's appointment. Sanchez, Aurier, Ndombele, Lo Celso, Bergwijn. Over £400 million spent, more than £230 million in net spend, and who were the surefire hits? Lucas Moura for a half in Amsterdam, and maybe Hoybier on the evidence of his first year. Even then, most of that has come either in the summer before Pochettino's sacking or the two years since. In short, Tottenham's decline has been a failure of recruitment and can be traced back to Mitchell's departure. The man himself, who later moved to RB Leipzig and then Monaco, later said the cost of building Spurs' new stadium made rebuilding the squad difficult. When you're trying to build a stadium and the level of investment that takes now, it's hard to align the two, he told The Athletic last year. Because of the sums of money it costs now to invest in players, especially in the Premier League. My philosophy is that you need, year on year, new voices, new profiles, just to stimulate the group, just to keep the group competitive. It's crucial to continue being competitive at the very, very top echelons of the game. Tough as it may be to stomach for Spurs supporters, it all went wrong during the best years in recent memory. By the time fans were celebrating in Amsterdam and partying in Madrid, the club was already two years along its path towards the angst of today. And yet, perhaps, Tottenham has already taken its first steps back with the hiring of Fabio Paratici as managing director of football. An admission from Levy that he was distracted by the stadium and non-football matters. That appointment led to reports that Hitchin had been sidelined. But don't shed a tear for him. Perhaps he's not the problem, and Levy is. But we know Hitchin's not the solution. It may take years before we discover whether Paratici was the solution, but at least we can say he isn't the problem. Not yet, anyway. After the farcical hiring and swift firing of Nuno after four miserable months, Paratici certainly needs his next appointment to succeed, or he may end up another footnote in Tottenham's torturous decline. But what do you think? Is Paratici the cure to Tottenham's ills? And who's to blame for the club's steep decline? Let us know below, and thanks for watching.